On a recent trip to Mexico, I knew I couldn't take much gear. I needed a small pouch that would carry a survival kit, a first aid kit, food, a life straw, and electronics accessories in addition to my wallet and passport. The Oakley Clean Days belt bag turned out to be exactly what I was looking for. It's water resistant, extremely durable, and my survival kit and first aid kits fit perfectly in the outside pockets. I brought this pouch with me everywhere, and because I was wearing it on a plane, it didn't count as luggage, which is great. Still, I had to be extremely careful when I brought the airport security in both the U.S. and Mexico. Now, firearms and blades were obviously not an option, and all my gear did make it through U.S. airport security just fine. But I had three items that got me in trouble by Mexico airport security guards who called the Mexican Marines to fully search my gear. I was detained, my passport and boarding pass were photographed, and they took three of my items of gear that they said were prohibited. Let's go ahead and take a look at this bag in detail. I'm going to unpack it and show you what I keep in there, and then I'm going to talk about these three items that got me in trouble. All right, just real quick, this is the actual bag that I carry to Mexico, and uh, I'll just show you a few things here. So this, this side here, I have a survival kit, and this is what um, the fishing hooks and lines were in. So you can see this list of items here. This is what I usually carry with me. Um, if I don't want to bring the big bag. So whistle, mylar blanket, signal mirror, mini AAA flashlight, which sucks, let me tell you. Uh, fishing line, hooks and weight, water purification tabs, antibacterial hand wipes, Fresnel lens, fire starter, and a magnifier. This bag actually is with the Fresnel lens came in, but uh, I'm able to put some other items in there as well. Water purification tabs, those turned into powder, so I threw those away. Don't need them with the uh, life straw. Fishing line, hooks and weight. Obviously, I'm going to need to get some uh, more hooks and weights to put in here. And this mini AAA flashlight, just uh, it doesn't work it out, out too well. Now, you see I've got a little lighter in there. And in my, in my experience, these work a lot better than carrying matches. Matches, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Uh, lighter, as long as you keep it dry, will always work. And uh, a lot more uh, better for starting fires than uh, carrying a pack of matches. So that's why I carry the lighter. Um, survival whistle and this little, it's a mag light, I guess, a single AAA battery mag light. Probably not as, even as good as a candle, about as good as a candle, which sucks. So I need to replace this and get a better light. But other than that, this is the survival kit and it fits perfectly in this pocket right here. Now right over here, I've got medical kit. And here you can see I've got... Um, Band-Aid small, Band-Aid medium, large, bandage pad, blanket, mylar, hand sanitizer pack, alcohol prep pad, antibiotic ointment, like Neurosporin, antibacterial hand wipe, towelette, Q-tips, butterfly closure, and extra strength Tylenol. This is the medical kit. It's just a really small, basic medical kit, and uh, it fits in this pouch absolutely perfectly, which is what I love. So this side medical, this side survival. And over here, um, I've got some chapstick, I've got a toothbrush, I can still have room uh, to fit other things inside there. So lots of room in this pouch right here. Um, the top pouch I have, food, beef jerky, um, Cliff's bars, I could even fit more food in there if I wanted to. Uh, this of course is not fully loaded, but I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of the kind of things that are in this pack. Um, in the main pouch, um, Apple earbuds, of course, if you're so inclined to listen to music, uh, extra charging cables, um, passport with um, extra money. Um, we've got the Life Straw. I showed you this in the uh, jungle video. This is really fantastic. You can drink from almost any water source with this. So it does not take the place of water itself, uh, bringing water out there, but it's great to have because it keeps pretty much forever. And uh, you can drink from any water source out there. Um, these pockets right here, I have some extra um, hand wipes. I have some uh, alcohol prep pads. These are really great. Um, bandana, Oakley bandana, a million and one uses for bandanas, uh, whether it be sweat absorption, face mask, cover your head, or uh, even a, a bandage if necessary. Got a wallet in here too, and uh, that's about it. It's really a versatile pack. I love it. You can carry a lot of things in here. And uh, no matter where you're going, um, you know, if you're going to vehicle or traveling, whatever, just grab the pack and you've got everything right there. Um, you know, throw it around your waist. If you're getting on an airplane, it's not going to count as extra luggage because you're wearing it, of course. But this is it. I really love this pack. Um, now, like I said, there were a couple items in here 
uh, they did get me in trouble. So let's go ahead and talk about those items. I was actually detained by Mexico airport security two separate times. The first time we had a layover in Mexico City and it was late at night and we had to clear customs and go back through security to wait for our uh, next flight. So bringing all my stuff through the Mexican airport security, I was a little bit worried because I knew a few of my items were kind of questionable. But one of the items in particular, when they saw this, they detained me, they pulled it out of my luggage, they took photos of it, they called some supervisors over and they were actually kind of torn as to whether or not they were going to uh, confiscate this or not. But ultimately, they did end up confiscating this. Mexican Marines came over, looked at it, and kind of just shrugged. But um, they said it was uh, prohibited against the rules, and they did, uh, uh, unfortunately, confiscate it from me. And that item was the Columbia River Knife and Tool Eaten Tool. Yep, a spork. Mexico Airport Security detained me over a spork, an eating utensil. Why do they do this? Well, it's got a flat screwdriver um, and six, eight, and 10 millimeter hex sockets on there. And evidently, uh, for some strange reason, you can't have tools in Mexico. I don't know, maybe they're afraid you're gonna fix something over there. But uh, for whatever reason, they said no tools, the airport security. And um, they said if it was a, just a metal spoon, it would be no problem. But because this particular eating utensil did have some tools on it, they said it could not go. And I knew it was a low value item. And uh, you know, let's face it, I'm over in Mexico. And the last thing I wanna do is get thrown in a Mexican jail for uh, you know, being belligerent or something. So I said, you know, just you take it. Um, I can pick up another one once I'm back in the States. It's not a huge deal. Um, and uh, chances are spoons are everywhere. So I could just pick up another spoon somewhere else. It's nice to have, um, but uh, not a huge deal that they took it. But they, they did detain me. Um, they did call the uh, Mexican Marines on me and take photos of this and double check with their supervisors. And uh, I will say that while it's really ridiculous that they took it, they were, uh, they were polite and professional the whole time. All right, so coming back from Cancun, we had to stop in Mexico City and um, for some reason we had to clear security again in Mexico City. So um, I was actually a little bit nervous about this. I don't know why, I just had a gut feeling. And um, I had uh, clearly been through security in the United States. I had been through security at Mexico City and they took that, uh, that spork. I had been through security in Cancun with no problems, uh, but for some reason I just kind of had a bad gut feeling. So. Um, you know, we went through security in Mexico uh, City and uh, I was actually detained again. And this was actually a little bit scary. When they, when they, the x-ray person, I guess, was looking on the screen, they kind of had a, a nervous look on their face and they shut the security uh, checkpoint down. They told me to stop right there. They wouldn't let me through. Um, they, they called some other people to start looking. And I thought, you know, unless somebody put something in my bag, I shouldn't really have anything in there. I mean, honestly, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I did have a couple of things that were questionable, but they did not see those ultimately. Um, um, just some common everyday items. Uh, but at any rate, as far as anything illegal, I, to the best of my knowledge, didn't have anything really. Uh, but still, they they saw something in my bag that caused alarm. So they called the Mexican Marines over. Uh, finally, they, uh, told me to come through the security checkpoint. They told me to uh, take out my passport, my boarding pass. They photographed those, uh, more Mexican Marines came over. They took one bag aside and started uh, taking everything. And I mean, everything out of it. And this item in particular was in my, uh, the Oakley pouch, uh, the survival pouch. And it was in one of my survival kits where they found. So uh, the thing that they made a big deal out of was a fishing weight, a standard, fishing weight. And I know you're looking at the, uh, you know, the x-ray machine, it looks like a bullet, but even if it was a bullet, I mean, what's the big deal for one bullet? I mean, it's, you're not going to overthrow a country with one bullet. And I know rules are rules, but uh, at any rate, any airport security uh, checker uh, worth a damn is going to look at this and say, you know what, this is not a bullet. This, this is a triangular shaped object, uh, but it was lead. It did stick out like a sore thumb. And this is what they made a big deal over. Uh, because if you're in Mexico and you have even one bullet that is not registered, that you're not supposed to have, they will put you in jail. They will. Do not pass go, do not collect $200, they will put you in jail. It's not the United States, they take that very seriously. Unless of course you're the cartels and they, uh, you know, you can get 50 caliber machine guns, but uh, for most people, 
you know, they see one bullet, any kind of firearms, they're extremely strict on that. So they thought this was a bullet, clearly. But they uh, pulled it out. I said, no, it's just a, just a fishing weight. And again, they called over their superiors. They called over uh, Mexican Marines, who again shrugged it off. Uh, a bunch of folks. And when they when they found this, when they were searching my bag before they found this, for a little while there, I was mentally preparing myself that I was going to go to a, a Mexican jail that day. Uh, I really thought I was. I was you know, trying to toughen myself up thinking, you know what, I don't know what the hell they found, but for some reason I'm going to end up in a Mexican jail and, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to deal with this. I need to find a way to, you know, escape or whatever, but you know, um, yeah, I, I really thought something was going to happen, but I, I kept my cool and I was polite about it and everything. Digging through my bag, they did find one other item that they confiscated. They said it was a no-go. Um, with this fishing weight, obviously, they found fishing hooks. Yeah, just uh, a little tiny pouch of fishing hooks, no bigger than a coin. And they said, these are a no-go. Um, I don't know, maybe they're afraid you're going to poke somebody's eye out. But uh, at any rate, these are common everyday items that uh, can get through U.S. security, no problem. But Mexico takes it very serious. Um, different countries have different laws and... Uh, you know, who am I to say what's right and wrong? They come over here, they need to obey our laws. We go over there, we got to obey their laws. So at any rate, those are the three items, uh, CKRT, spork, uh, fishing weight and fishing hooks. All three of these items, um, you know, got me detained, almost got me in trouble. And like I said, the second time in Mexico City, once they started calling uh, uh, law enforcement over and their superiors and everybody and making a big deal, putting pulling me aside, taking pictures of my passport, I thought I was going to jail that day. And it's... Uh, it's a scary feeling, so you got to really toughen yourself up mentally and uh, just prepare yourself for whatever happens. But uh, ultimately, they just simply confiscated these items and let me go. So I thanked them uh, for their professionalism, said sorry to be a bother, and went on my way. And uh, when I got home, I just unpacked and uh, the rest of my stuff... Like I said, I did have a few things that uh, that I used for self-defense with me that they did not take or even notice. And I'm not going to go into detail on those uh, just because uh, I don't want, you know, somebody working at a security checkpoint sees the channel and says, oh, look at this. Uh, nothing illegal or anything like that. But like I said, common everyday items that uh, could potentially have dual purpose, dual usage for uh, self-defense and whatnot. Because let's face it, the world's a dangerous place. And uh you gotta you gotta protect yourself. But uh, at any rate, that's it. That's that's what almost got me uh, in trouble. So you, so this this Oakley bag is a fantastic bag. You pack it. Just be careful because a fishing hook, a fishing weight. Um, that's the kind of stuff that gets you detained at the airport. So uh, that's about it.